One of the coolest quantum materials is a superconductor. A superconductor is a material that can carry current without losing energy at all. It turns out that all the wires in our everyday lives, like this power cord, use metals like copper or aluminum. Metals are good conductors, but they're not superconductors. That means that they lose energy the whole time we're using them. So think about all of those power lines everywhere, leaking energy, and we have an energy crisis going on. But if we could replace all of those wires with superconductors, which carry current perfectly and don't lose any energy, we could go a long way towards solving the energy crisis. So how do superconductors work, and why don't we already use them in all of the power lines? Superconductors are already used in a lot of places, but they're not used in all of the power lines yet because no one has yet found a superconductor that works at normal outdoor temperatures and pressures. Some work at outdoor temperatures, but only at crazy high pressures like one and a half million times atmospheric pressure. Others work at outdoor pressures, but only if you cool them below about minus 280 degrees Fahrenheit. Still, if we could find a superconductor that worked at normal outdoor temperatures and pressures, one we could use to replace all of the regular metal wires in the power grid, we could save 5 to 10% of the energy that we currently use. This is why so many scientists around the world, myself included, are working on developing better superconductors. So how do they work? Superconductors work because of an awesome trick of quantum mechanics. Have you ever heard that no two pieces of matter can be in the same place at the same time? It turns out that this is only half true. That's because there are two kinds of particles out in the universe, fermions and bosons. Everything that you've ever held in your hand or touched is made of fermions. That's because the matter that you touch and even your body itself is made up of atoms and atoms are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons, all of which are fermions. And there's a strict quantum rule called the Pauli exclusion principle, which forbids any two fermions from being in the same quantum state at the same time. This is why I can't pass my hands through each other. This is why when you stand on the floor, you don't fall through. But bosons are different. If you've ever used a laser pointer, you've used the fact that bosons can all be in the same state at the same time. Let me show you with the help of Schrodinger here. The basic particles of light are called photons. They're little packets of energy in the form of light. And they're bosons, which means that they can all be in the same quantum state at the same time. Lasers use this trick to stuff a bunch of photons all into the same state which is why laser light is so bright and why cats love it. Superconductors use the same kind of quantum trick to work their magic. What carries current inside of both metals and superconductors is the electrons inside of those materials. When we say that current is flowing, we really mean that electrons are moving inside of the material. Well, the electrons inside of a superconductor, yes, they're fermions, but it turns out that if you put two fermions together, the two together make a boson. So the electrons inside of a superconductor use the buddy system. They pair up and those pairs act like bosons. Because the current in superconductors is carried by pairs of electrons that all act like bosons, and because bosons can be in the same quantum state at the same time, there's nothing to stop those bosonic pairs from going into the very lowest energy state at the same time. So that's what most of the pairs do. When you're using a superconductor, the electron pairs that carry current are already in the lowest energy state possible. So how could they lose energy while carrying current? There's no lower energy state for those pairs to go into if they were to lose energy. It's like taking the elevator all the way down to the bottom floor of a building. You just can't go any further down. Therefore, the electron pairs are quantum mechanically forbidden from losing any energy as they carry current. This concept of there being a lowest energy state below which there are no other states, this is the concept of the ground state in quantum mechanics. And it is pervasive in quantum phenomena. The fact that superconductors can carry current without losing any energy 
is why they're already used in several places to make our lives better, even though you have to get them really cold to make them work. How cold? Liquid nitrogen is 77 Kelvin, that's minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's plenty cold enough to make copper oxygen-based superconductors work. And liquid nitrogen costs about as much as milk, so that's not a bad way to cool your superconductors. In fact, some big cities already use superconducting wires in places where they need a really high current density, like right outside of the power generation station. Superconducting lines have been installed in several cities, including Detroit, Chicago, and Essen, Germany. If you've ever had an MRI, you used superconductors, because MRI machines need them in order to make the strong magnetic fields that make MRIs work. And what about levitating trains? Magnetic levitation trains using superconducting electromagnets are already in use in China, Japan, and South Korea. And those trains, metaphorically at least, are taking us towards a future where quantum materials, like superconductors, will change our lives and our world.